All right, what's up, y'all? What's up, y'all? Back at it again with another Pokemon challenge. And let me apologize to you guys in advance. Um, I was supposed to upload the Milk Tank challenge. I accidentally deleted my videos, y'all. And when I went to the project, it wouldn't let me produce it because, of course, I didn't have the videos to make it happen. But... You know, lesson learned. So guess what? This month, for the month of August, you are going to get not one, not two, not three, but four new Pokemon challenges, which honestly works out for me because um, I don't have school right now. I have a little bit of a break before school starts back up and before work starts back up. So, you know, got a little time on my hands. Now, today... We are going to figure out for this next challenge, can I beat Pokemon Crystal using only a Vaporeon? Alright, now as you can see, of course, I'm using a girl for this game. And why? It's simply because I want to. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less to it. Um, here's the thing about Vaporeon. Vaporeon has really, really great stats. It has a base stat total of 525. It has awesome i mean awesome defense awesome special defense vaporeon is basically a tank you know what i'm saying uh its attack in is meh its special attack is pretty good as well speed is a little on the slow side uh hp is okay but regardless that's still pretty good so we're cool with that so we're gonna see if we can beat the game with just a vaporeon i'm allowed to use other pokemon for like hm users but i can't use them in battle I can't have any held items in battle. I am allowed for my Pokemon to hold items, but I'm going to try my best to, you know, not do that. But we'll, you know, we'll see. Depends on how crazy the game gets. Uh, surprisingly enough on Instagram, a lot of people voted that I couldn't do it, <laughs> which I guess is understandable. But, you know, I, I think it can be done. Uh, again, Vaporeon has a base stat total of 525. Really, really strong. Now, here's the thing about Vaporeon. I'm actually going to start off at the beginning with a Vaporeon. I normally don't do that. I normally like to start with first forms first and then evolve them. But here's the problem. You can get an Eevee by the third gym. But I won't be able to even evolve that Eevee until I get the Kanto. I have a chance to get it with one of the rods before uh, the Ice type gym. Yes, I, I understand that. But that takes a little minute. So this will be the first and hopefully one of the last few times in which I start the game with a Vaporeon. Now... I'm not using the random generator or anything like that to get a Vaporeon from the beginning. So I'm going to go ahead and grab Totodile. So that way, um, my rival eventually will get a Chikorita. Uh, why am I doing that? So it can make the game just a little bit harder. Now, of course, I have a cheat code entered in that I'm going to use just real quick. This is the only time I'm going to use a cheat in the game. Uh, to where I'll run into a Vaporeon as soon as I go out in the wild. Let me just double check and make sure I have everything up and i actually don't so let me get that set up and then we'll go ahead and start our journey while i'm on my way to go see one of professor elm's friends to get the good news i run into a vaporeon and again this is the only time i'm gonna use a cheat in the game to make sure i run into one uh i'm just gonna go ahead and catch one so that way i don't waste any time and i have my vaporeon let's go ahead and check out the stats i'll go ahead and switch them out and i'm gonna end up depositing Totodile at some point, although I might use him as an HM user because I don't want to use any HMs on Vaporeon. Um, looking at the stats, uh, again, special attack is actually pretty high right now. Special defense is really good. Speed, attack, and defense are pretty much on the lower side, but, you know, again, this is an evolved Pokemon at level 4, so in my mind, this is... Ooh, this is a lot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to do minimum battles if possible. Um, actually, more minimum battles than I did with the Milk Tank Challenge. And again, I apologize because it's not going to be up because I removed the files. I'll make sure I be more careful next time. I'm not messing up this challenge. I can assure you that. It's the interesting thing about Vaporeon as I'm getting into the first rival fight. Vaporeon starts off with Tackle and Sand... Uh, I said Sand Attack. Tackle and Tail Whip. It learns Sand Attack at level 8. It doesn't learn Water Gun until level 16. Uh, which means we won't get the same type attack bonus until level 16. So for right now, we're just going to grind it out with... Uh, I said Quick Attack. I'm sorry. Tackle. 
Um, we start off with lower than Chikorita, but I think we can go ahead and push our way through, or maybe not. <laughs> um, dang, it seems like we're just not doing well at all for the first battle, and of course, we end up losing. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Maybe I should have grinded and I got should have got to level four or five or something like that, but um, you know. Hey, it happens. It is what it is. So we'll just keep moving forward. Head to the Sprout Tower. And truth be told, the only reason I'm even here is to get the HM Flash. You won't even really need the HM Flash for most of the game. But just to, you know, have it. Because I will need it eventually. And as you can see, we're already having trouble. Why? Because it's Bell Sprouts. Even at level 3, uh, grass types are still super effective against water types. So it's causing a little bit of a problem. I think I should be able to go ahead and get my way through. But... You know, this might be, as you can see, or actually is, an early on challenge. So we go ahead and try to fight against the Elder. Normally I don't record this, but, you know, seeing as I believe he has one or two Bell Sprouts, um, this should be interesting. We start off with Sand Attack. He starts off with Growth, so if we get hit with a Vine Whip, that could be trouble. We start tackling him. He's still missing. Sand Attack really came in handy with this one. He missed most of his Vine Whip, so we were able to take him out. Here comes the second Bell Sprout. Let's see if we can have the same luck. He hits us with the first Vine Whip, hits us with another one. And then he continues to miss as of right now. So two Santa Attacks might have did it, but then he hits us with another one. If we get two more, we're out. Oh my goodness, now we're really down. Uh, we have one more. Well, not a Bell Sprout, but a Hoo Hoo. So we go for Santa Attack in hopes that maybe he'll miss. And of course, he knocks us out. Uh, we could have made it through that fight. We're going to try this again. I decide to try to fight again. This time, we're just going to go ahead and use the same strategy. Except we're not going to use Sand Attack. We're just going to go ahead and start attacking outright. And maybe that wasn't such a good idea. It's already looking worse for us. So we go for a Sand Attack with the second one. He gets a critical hit. That doesn't look too good. And we keep attacking him. And we level up to level 11. So maybe we'll have a better chance against a Hoo. Sand Attack, he's already missing tackle. So that's good. Then we start using Tail Whip to hopefully get... His defense now, he hits us with a tackle. If we get one more hit, we're out and we lose. Sheesh. I didn't think we was going to come into a problem like this early on. It's those darn bell sprouts. You know, even though Vaporeon has pretty decent special defense, hey, you're still weak against a Pokemon one way or another, right? I'm going to grind about one or two more levels and come back. We should be able to take them out easily. Third try, and now we're at level 12, pretty close to level 13, so let's see how we do. We start off with a sand attack, he hits us with a vine whip, and we start tackling him outright. Um, I try not to waste too many times on sand attacks. If it misses once, we just gonna go for it and see what happens. We hit the second one with a sand attack, he misses the vine whip, hits us with another vine whip, but we're already in better shape than we were before, and we'll hoo hoo, we just start tackling outright because I think we're strong enough at this point to get it, and we get the win. I'm going to be honest, y'all, I was not expecting to have to do a slight grinding just to beat the Elder. Like, this is the first time in, you know, I've played in any Pokemon challenge where the Elder has given me so much trouble. Even when I use Totodile, my regular, you know, Pokemon runs, it's never this much of an issue. Like, that's pretty crazy. But now we're on to the uh, first gym, so we're going to go ahead and heal up real quick. And then we're going to head that way, and let's see how we fare at level 13. Um, I can't really skip any of the trainers in here, so you kind of just have to, you know, take them as is. And even with the first trainer, we tackle our way through, and it's pretty easy. We decide to challenge Faulkner, and at level 14, I think we stand a pretty good chance. Using tackle, that's pretty much wearing him down. Next is Pidgeotto. I use Sand Attack to lower his, you know, accuracy, because I know he has a move that can lower our accuracy. He's continuing to hit us surprisingly though, which is crazy because he has not missed once, but we easily take him out and we get the win. A little bit more over level than what I wanted to be. I was hoping to like do this gym at like a level 10 or a level 11, but you know, it is what it is. You know, it happens. So on my way, uh, before I head to the next town, I need to go ahead and get the egg from Professor Elms A. And which we should all know that it's a Tokopi inside. So, yep. We're just going to keep it moving. In the cave, I decided to go ahead and pick up the TM and teach Vaporeon Swift. Reason being, Swift is an attack that never misses. And it's a lot better than Tackle. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep it the whole run, but I'm going to keep it for now just for safety. I made it to Azalea Town. And, of course, a lot of the rocket battles early on, we can't really avoid. 
So of course, we go ahead and battle them, but really the Rockets are no problem. Uh, Vaporeon is really strong at this point with a high level advantage. So really, we're going through the Rocket Grunts and we're taking care of them easy. I said easy, easily. We level up to level 15. I feel like as long as we don't get past level 16 um, before we battle Bugsy, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. But these are easy. Team Rocket is pretty easy in Generation 2. Unless you have a Pokemon that's like weak to like a lot of poison types, you can manage pretty well against them. All right, so next is the Bugsy fight. And first off, he, not she, just want to make sure we get that straight. Bugsy is a boy, not a girl. No, a lot of people think otherwise. She starts off, <laughs> I said, <laughs> he starts off with Metapod. Uh, we hit with Swift, Tackle hits us, but it doesn't really do much damage. We level up. Next, we have Kakuna. Kakuna starts using Harden, but we should still be pretty good, except we get Poison. It's not looking too good, but let's see if we can do good against Scyther. Scyther uses Quick Attack, and uh, the Poison is just really wearing us down. It's like, really messing us up. <sighs> and of course, we lose. If we didn't get poisoned, we probably would have won. Let's try this again. Take number two. Once again, starts off with Metapod. We start with Swift and start hitting Metapod and knocking it down. Next, we have Kakuna. I try to go on the safe side and use Sand Attack just to lower its accuracy so we don't get poisoned. Then we go for Swift. It goes for Harden. We go for Mud Slap so it can use some more accuracy. And we get the win. Next is Scyther. I'm going to go ahead and try to lower its accuracy so it doesn't hit us as much because it knows Quick Attack. And they can get one quick off if we get in low enough health to knock us out. It's still hitting us, so I'm a little worried about that. And it's crazy how much it's actually landing, even though we use so many sand attacks. But we managed to bring it out, and we win. And that wasn't too bad. I had some bad luck the first time around, but you know, second time around, we made it out pretty good. We have the second rival fight, and I'm a little worried, mainly because of the bay leaf, but I think we should be good. Let's see. We start off with Mud Slap against Ghastly. It tries to use Hypnosis. It misses. Thank goodness. Then she sends out bay leaf, of course. I go for Sand Attack. Razor Leaf actually doesn't do too much damage, but it uses Reflect, which is not what we wanted. So we continue using Sand Attack just so that way it can have the lowest... You know amounts of hits as possible we start using swift but it's used a lot of reflect so that's not good and it's still hitting us with razor leaf which is doing a lot of damage and we end up losing the battle let's try this again all right so we give it a second try mud slap against ghastly still use hypnosis same result doesn't really do anything sends out bay leaf we start out with sand attack once again it hits us with a critical leaf razor leaf and then uses reflect man razor leaf it's fine as long as we don't get a critical hit. And even when it doesn't trick the toe, it still does a lot of damage. And Reflect boosts regular defense, so that doesn't really help. But this time, we managed to take it out, so we're good standing. Um, Reflect is faded. We use Swift. It uses Bite. Doesn't do much damage. We're left with a slither of health, and we win the battle. Man, Bayleaf slash Meganium, when it becomes Meganium eventually, is really going to give us some trouble if we're not careful. Uh, I hope we learn an ice type move. I think we learned Aurora Beam at some point, and that should help us out. Because other than that, Bayleaf is going to give us problems. In case you didn't know, Bayleaf is extremely tanky, and it has good special defense as well. So because of that, it can cause problems for us in the long run, even if we have some type coverage moves. Now, here's a screwed up part. <laughs> I have 4 HP left. I'm glad I had that antidote in there. Wait. He wasn't poisoned. That was the last time. What am I thinking? Oh, oh well, we won. Whatever. We're moving on. I had to go ahead and go to the daycare man and get an egg. Because in case you guys didn't know, the odd egg, it comes with one of the baby Pokemon. You can get a Pichu, you can get an Igglybuff, a Magby, a Let Kid, or Smoochum. Um, don't know which one I'm gonna get, so guys go ahead and comment below and you know, tell me which one you think I'm gonna get. Comments are good for the YouTube algorithm. All right, so now it's time to battle with me. Now, the last time I did a solo run challenge, unfortunately the video was not able to be uploaded, it was with a milk tank, and we did really well against it. Let's see how we do this time. So we hit Clefairy with a Swift, it uses a Metronome, it uses Mega Kick. Uh, this is with the second Metronome, uses my Reader, but we take it out before it has a chance to attack us again. Now we have milk tank, and as we know, milk tank gives everybody trouble. So we start mud slapping it so that way it can miss. It's using rollout and powering up and it's not missing and god darn it. 
that wasn't too good. Let's try this again. Attempt number two. We'll go ahead and continue to hit uh, the Swift, and ew, we get Leech Seed out of all the attacks we could have got hit with. We got Leech Seed. I'm going to tell y'all right now, we're not going to make it out this way. It, it, it's just not going to happen. We're going to keep getting Leech Seed in this. <laughs> God darn, we really are not doing good. I, I think I'm going to just have to grind a little bit and then come back. Decided to try one more time just to see if we can get lucky. Uh, our attack falls, and then she hits us with a spark. I, I swear, I kid you not, anytime I do a nine solo run challenge, Kaferi's Metronome moves suck. She is like getting the best of weapons, and I don't know how this is happening, but whatever. So we keep trying, we go for a mutt slap. She's going for rollout and not missing much, so that's not helping, and we get taken out. Yeah, screw this crap, we're just going to grind for a little bit. At level 21, we're going to go ahead and try this again and see how well we do. We hit Swift to play it now. Oh, my. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> screw this crap. We're just going to stop. It doesn't make any sense what just happened, y'all. Like, I, <laughs> I'm glad I'm recording this because I literally can't make this up. It's like she's having the best of luck when it comes to like, you know, metronomes. That never happens. But, um, you know, we make it through pretty good. We got a feature site coming our way. And it does a little bit of damage, so we're still good. We use Mud Slap in hopes that Rollout will eventually miss. And it's still hitting. And this is, I'm going to be honest, this is wild. Then she goes for a track. If we get hit by a track, that's going to be a problem. We get hit by stomp and get flinched, and we get stomped out again. <sighs> Let's just grind for a little bit. It's no point to keep coming back and then knowing it's a possibility that we're not going to be able to get past Miltech. She's just too bulky. So on our way, while we were grinding for a little bit, Tokipi came out the egg. We're not going to give it a nickname, and we're not even going to keep it. We're just going to deposit it in the sea of forgetfulness of the PC. Because... This is a solo run challenge, and I love Tokopi, but we don't need it. You know, surprisingly enough, we got a female Tokopi. I never get a female Tokopi. We always get a male. All right, so we try again at level 24 to see how we do. Um, Swift is still not taking it all the way out, and our Swift gets disabled, which is not the worst thing in the world. We take it out without getting with any damage. Next we have is the Beastly Milton. It's with a stomp, and we get flinched, and she starts going for rollouts, but misses. We're using Mother Slap, but I said Mother Slap, <laughs> Mud Slap, but she's still managing to get hits on us. So we're trying to lower her accuracy as much as we possibly can. We finally get it maxed out. We use Water Gun and we finish her off. Oh man, I, I, I didn't think we were going to struggle this much against a gym leader this early, but again, this is one of the reasons why Whitney is like literally one of the hardest gems to face in Generation 2. This is crazy. But I'm glad we made the pass, and now we can move on. Now I get to this weird tree. I decide to water it, and apparently it doesn't like it. And it's a pseudo-wudo. All right, so we're just going to go ahead and capture that thing. And I'm, ooh, that took a lot of damage. Uh, I'm glad Water Gun didn't kill it, because I thought that's what was going to happen. And Phileo is taking a lot of damage, but we managed to get it just in time. Thank goodness. I think I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to keep it as an HM user. I have to go to the gym, but... I forgot, unlike Pokemon Gold and so where you can just battle more than any time you want, you actually have to go to the tower first. So I decided to go to the tower and then go ahead and battle. I meet a guy named Suin. You Suin? I think I'm pronouncing his name right. I don't know. Uh, but he's looking for Suin Kun, uh, which we'll deal with a little later on in the gym. Uh, or not the gym, the game. But I meet up with the gym leader and he's doing the same thing. So. Of course, we have to get to the rival fight. That's going to be the next step. So next is the next rival fight. And of course, he blames us for not being able to find a legendary Pokemon. What, what a prick. So we're just going to go ahead and wipe him out. So we use Mud Slap. He uses Curse. That could be a bit of a problem. Hopefully it's not. 
Next, he sends out Magnemite, which could definitely be a problem if we get paralyzed or confused, but we don't, so that's good. Next is Bayleaf. Uh-oh, here comes the issue. Let's see if we can make it through. Curse is hitting us hard, and of course, Razor Leaf is continuing to hit us hard, and yeah, we lose that fight. Let, let, let's try this again. Fight again, and instead of going for Mud Slap this time, I decided to go for Water Gun. It does a lot more damage. Um, He doesn't hit us with Curse, so that's good. Next, we have Magnemite hit him with a Mud Slap. But we get confused and manage to make it out there. I'd rather be confused than paralyzed, but that's still a problem. Uh, Bayleaf is up next. I decided to hit it with a mud slap. I know it's not going to do much damage, but I want to make sure he misses. Of course, he hits us with a razor leaf, and it does a little bit of damage. But this next one does a lot of damage. And he keeps getting critical hits, and we get knocked out. You know what? I'm going to just go to the Kimono Girls and grind and come back and try to beat him. Level 29, I decided to try again, hit him with a water attack, and Curse hits us again. Man, I feel like each time we get hit by Curse, there's a possibility that we're going to lose. We start off with Swift, Poison Powder misses, we get a critical hit with Swift, and we're still hanging in there by Slither Health. Hopefully we can take Zubat out, Curse hits us, and luckily Supersonic misses, and we get the win. Oh man, look, I didn't realize how much curse was a problem. We are really going to have some trouble in this ghost gym. Of course, you know, we're talking to the rival and we fall through. And yeah, our rival is just a prick. So we encounter the three legendary dogs and, you know, they run off, you know, do their thing as usual. And it's pretty crazy. So now that we're done with that, we can finally go to the gym. One of the trainers, we actually end up learning bite. So I'm going to actually get rid of Sand Attack because we have Mud Slap. And that's going to be very, very useful while we're battling. Because um, Bite is a dark type move in Gen 2. And it is super effective against Ghost types and Psychic types. So yeah, we can actually go ahead and take these guys out. And I was a little nervous at first. But since we have Bite, I think we can actually do pretty good. We knock out Gaslin one hit. He sends out Haunter. We knock out Haunter on one hit. Next is Gengar. Gengar doesn't go down in one hit and puts us to sleep. This is going to be a problem because he has Dream Eater, but we wake up pretty quick. And last but not least, we have one more Haunter and we get past him and we win. You know, I'm not going to lie. I thought this was going to be very difficult. Bite really came through and helped us out. And take on Chuck, uh, the fifth gym leader. He first sends out Primate. So we start off with Surf. And Surf knocks him out in one hit. But now we have to worry about Polyrath. Dynamic Punch is a problem. Even though it's not as accurate. But if we get hit by that and get put to sleep. It can cause a problem. Luckily we start using Mud Slaps. But he uses my Reader which guarantees the next hit. So that's going to be a problem. But I don't think he uses it the right way. Because he should have used Dynamic Punch. And he finally does. And we become confused. So now we got to hope that we don't hit ourselves in confusion too many times. Um, of course, we're getting good luck on our side, but then he confuses us again, and yet we're still having a problem. We just need one more hit, and bam, we do it. Uh, that only took one try. Thank goodness. Now we can move on. Before jumping on to the next gym, we decide to battle Yuswing, which I just realized uh, that's a mix-up on words for Swing Kun. I don't know why I never realized that all these years. But anyway, he sends out Drowsy. Uh, of course, he, we don't get hit by Hypnosis. We start learning Aurora Beam, which is really good. That's going to come in handy for our rival fights. The question is, what move should we get rid of? This is a tough one. Swift is 100% accuracy, so I really don't want to get rid of that. Bite is going to be strong against Psychic and Dark types. And Mud Slap is going to come in handy as well. <sighs> I decided to take a risk and go ahead and get rid of Swift. Don't want to, but, you know, eh, we'll see. He sends out Electro... We decide to go with Surf. That knocks him out in one hit. Then we got Haunter. Probably would have been better to keep Bite. But whatever, we knock him out in one hit and easily win the fight. Quick, while we were going to give Jasmine the medicine, Smoochum came out of the egg. So if you guess Smoochum, guess what? You are absolutely correct. So now we can battle the 6th gym leader, Jasmine. She sends out Magnemite, which we need the one hit KO because that could be a problem. We knock him out in, you know, one hit with Surf. Second Magnemite comes out, knock him out in Surf. And next we have Steelix, who I'm not worried about because Steelix is weak against water types and we knock him out in one hit. And hey, that was 10 times easier than I thought it was going to be. So let's move on. So I decided to go ahead and catch the Red Gyarados. You might be asking why. Well, I like Red Gyarados. 
I think it's a pretty cool concept. Actually, to be honest with you, I think um, shiny Pokemon, the way they introduced them, was a really, really cool concept. Anyways, you know what I'm saying? Just my personal opinion. But we're going to use Gyarados as an HM user as well. So, might as well have him to keep on our side for a little bit. Right, so we finally get the price, the 7th Gym Leader, which shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, we're pretty strong enough. Um, we take Seal down at about two hits. Next up is Dugong. Uh, it flinches first hit, so that's good. It flinches again. Wow, that's lucky. <laughs> we take Dugong down. Last but not least is Pillar which we can surf, and it's part ground, so that easy goes down, and hey, that's that. Time to move on. I have the next rival fight against Tack, and I decided to go ahead and use Aura Beam. Aurora Beam, I said Aura Beam. Knocks out Golbat in one hit. Magnemite is next. We use Surf. Take it down in one hit. Then we have Meganium. The good news is now we have an Ice type move, so let's see how it does. It almost takes it down in one hit. Razor Leaf is a critical hit, but hey, it doesn't matter. We take it down to Surf. Then we have Haunter. We decide to go for Bite. That goes down in one hit. And then we have Sneasel. We decide to use Bite on it as well. I don't know why I did that. Sneasel was part Dark type. I, I don't know what I was thinking. We go for Surf instead, and then we knock it out, and we get the win. That was pretty easy. Let me tell you, Bayleaf has been giving us problems all game. So it's really nice that we have an Ice type move now that we can use. And with that being said, we move on. I didn't battle both of the Rocket Executives. Uh, the first one is Arbok. And during that time where I was, you know, going through with Team Rocket, I decided to teach Vaporeon Acid Armor. Reason being is because Vaporeon doesn't really have great defense. So I figured it'll come in handy because Acid Armor raises your defense by two stages. So I figured it'll come in handy at some point. But anyways, this is an easy battle. We knock the first executive out and just one hit with each Pokemon. And then we move on to the second one. Which is a little harder than the first one, but this is easy because Hound Door is a foul type, so it goes down in one hit. Coughing is too weak, they go down in one hit, and Hound Doom also goes down in one hit. And with that being said, Team Rocket is done, and now we can move on to the 8th Gym Leader. But I will say this, Vaporeon is a bit strong right now. Um, I'm going to have to try to skip some trainer battles. I've been trying to do that this whole game, but I've been getting caught up in a few. But, you know, maybe this will help with the Elite Four. We'll see. But I don't want it to be too overpowered. Over to the eighth gym leader. The time to go ahead and battle Suinku. Release, uh, you know, Gold Nugget real quick. In Pokemon Crystal, you can battle Suinku. And that is one out of the three legendary dogs that will actually face you um, without, you know, them roaming around. Which makes it a lot easier in most cases. But, you know, we're not capturing it because we don't need it. Uh, Suinku uses Rain Dance. So I go ahead for Surf. And thought it'd be a two hit, but it's all good. Rain is still falling, and that was an easy victory. And with that being said, we can go ahead and move on to the next gym. All right, so we finally make it, made it, not make it, made it to the final gym leader clear. And I believe we should be able to one shot everybody except Kingdra. Let's see how we do it. So Dragonair goes down to one shot. Second Dragonair goes down to one shot. Third Dragonair also goes down to one shot. Now, Kingdra is not going to go down to one shot. This is going to be a tough one, but let's see. We get a lucky critical hit, though, so that works. But we get paralyzed. That's not looking too great. We use another War Beam, but the problem is we're paralyzed. So, you know, but hey, we end up winning. And, whew, that went a lot better than it actually could have. But, hey, we get the badge, or not really. We don't get the badge because uh, Claire wants to be a prick. So... We gotta take this challenge in the Dragon's Clan. Or, did I say Dragon's Clan? <laughs> Dragon's Den. <laughs> and then after that, we can go ahead and do what we gotta do and go to the for. So, of course, we passed the test. And... <laughs> Claire might need to have a little heart check. But she couldn't even pass the test. I mean, it's all about balance, Claire. You know what I'm saying? Just, just give us the badge. And with that being said... We can go ahead and move on to the Elite Four. It is about time. It's been a long time coming. It's been an interesting, I want to say, journey to say the least. Uh, we've hit some brick walls that I didn't expect to hit. But, you know, hey, that's how it is in solo run challenges. Sometimes you get it easy. Sometimes you don't. Let's look at the stats. We're at level 51 right now. Um, it knows Roar Beam, Surf, Bite, and Acid Armor. It's special attack and special defense is really good. Speed is okay. Attack and defense is not really great. 
but I think we should be in good shape. If anything, I might grind a little bit, but we might not have to. I think we'll be fine. Let's see how we do. Now we have the final rival battle in, well, really in Johto. Uh, he sends out Sneasel first. We start off with Surf. Knock Sneez out in one hit. It should be a pretty easy one, but we'll see. Magneton comes out next. Knock it out in one hit. Level up to 53 in the process. Next, we have Meganium. Let's see how a war being does. Knocks it out in one hit. All right, we're good to go. Go bad is next. Knock him out in one hit. After that, we have Haunter. We decide to go for Bite. That knocks it out in one hit. And Kadabra, of course, is frail as I don't know what. So we knock it out in one hit, and we easily get the win. And let's keep it going now that we're ready for the Elite Four. All right, first in the Elite Four, we have Will the Psychic Type Master. So he starts off with Zalt 2. We decide to go for Bite. Knocks it down in one hit. Zegator is next. It goes down in almost one hit. We get Leech Seeded, which could be a problem. So that means we got to win this battle really, really fast. We decide to go for Surf with Jinx. It almost knocks it out in one hit, but at least we don't get a special drop. So that's good. He sends out Slowbro, which is real bulky. We want to hurry up and take it out. Is uses curse, but we managed to get it out quickly. Finally, we have the final exalt too, which goes down in one hit. Whew, I'm glad that went a lot better than we than it, you know, uh, could have been. That leech seed really would have destroyed us if we weren't careful. Let's move on to the next one. In battles, I decided to heal Vaporeon up because I am allowed to use items outside of my battle. And I forgot to mention this at the beginning. I'm allowed to use held items, but the only held, held item I have right now is the omelet coin. I'm trying to make it a little more challenging. So we have Arya Dose next. We decide to go for Surf. That knocks down one hit. Venomoth is next. We take it down in one hit with Surf. Then we have Fortress. We take it down in one hit as well, thanks to a critical. Muck is a little bit more bulky, so it's going to take a little more time. It uses Minimize, but luckily we don't miss. And finally, we have Crobat. It starts with Double Team, which can be a problem. It uses Full Restore. We miss our Roar Beam, but we knock it out on the second try. Pretty easy fight. Let's move on. Next, we have Bruno. Bruno, back at it again. All right, so we go for Surf with Hitmon Top. We knock it out. Hitmon Chan is next. It uses Mock Punch, but we get rid of it in two hits, so that's good. Then we have Hitmon Lee. I decided to go for Aura Beam just to switch it up a little bit. High Jump Kick does a little bit of damage, but we survived that. We have Machamp, and I don't want to take any chances with it. It misses Cross Chop, but uses a Max Potion, but we still managed to get it down to two hits, so that's good. And last but not least, we have Onyx, but this is pretty easy. Knock it out in one hit, and we can move on to the next person. And it's next on the list. Starts off with Umbreon, which can be very bulky, but... Um, dang, I didn't realize we didn't have that many uh, surfs left. Let me go ahead and save that. We knock it out in two hits, so that's really good. Vile Plume is up next. We almost knock it out, but we get paralyzed, and it starts healing itself. Oh, we're paralyzed, so that's not a good thing. We have Gengar. It uses Curse, so Paralyzation and Curse. Ooh, that's going to be trouble. But we go ahead and take Merkur out, and we got to hurry up and take Houndoom out, otherwise we're really going to be in trouble. It uses Crunch, but we take it out in one surf and win the fight. I'm just thankful that took one try. That really could have been much worse than what it really was. All right, so now we have the final battle, the champion battle with Lance. Let's see how we do. We decided to go for Ass Armor just to be on the safe side because I know we'll knock out everybody with the exception of um, Gyarados and Charizard in one hit because you know the four times weakness thing. Uh, I don't know why I went for that a second time, but whatever. We use Orb Beam. It's continuing to use Surf. We use Surf as well. I don't know why I was thinking to do that. It uses Hyper Beam, but as you can see, because of Acid Armor, it does hardly anything, and we level up in the process. Next, we have the first Dragonite. That goes down in one hit. Second Dragonite goes down in one hit. Third Dragonite's about to come out, and it's going to go down in one hit, and it does. Wow. <laughs> Next, we have Aerodactyl, which is also a four times weakness to Ice-type move, so we take it out. And finally, we have Charizard, and we go for Surf. And at level 58, we are the champion. But guess what, guys? It's not over yet because, well, what do you know? We have to go over to Kanto, which Kanto is pretty easy. We have eight badges that we have to get over there. And then we have to battle the secret boss, which is red, which I feel like is going to be an extreme challenge. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to avoid as many battles as I can in Kanto, with the exception of the gym leaders. So that way we're not too, too overpowered and you know for red and just in case we have to go back and grind we can always do so on the trainers that we miss let's do it so as soon as i arrive in kanto and anybody who's played pokemon gold silver crystal you already know there's a number of things to do um you know some people they would go ahead and attack the 
the Million City Gym first because it's right there. But for me, I actually want to go in order. So there's a list of things that I have to do uh, in order to do that. I'm still trying to avoid as many trainer battles as possible because right now we're at a pretty decent level. And of course, I don't want to be overpowered. So I think we're going to start by heading to the power point first. I said power point, power plant first, and then we'll figure out things from there. Before we go to Brock, you know, now that we solved the power plant problem and got the guys generated back, I decided to go ahead and battle and capture Snorlax. Reason being is because it has leftovers. Now, I'm going to try my best to not use leftovers if I don't have to. Um, but it'll definitely come in handy just in case we need. I don't think we will, but let me not speak too soon. So, of course, I'm going to try to capture it. And Snorlax is not easy Pokemon to catch, and it has leftovers, so of course it's going to recover each turn. Meanwhile, we keep losing health points, but we managed to capture it just in time. So it worked out just well. I think I'll just name it A.V. So first up is good old Brock. Um, and this should be easy one. We should be able to sweep this whole team really with Surf. Even the uh, dual types, the rock and water dual types like Armistar and Kaboot types. They should be easy one hit sweeps. Um, this is probably going to be the easiest gem because of the type advantage inside Kanto. Uh, which is ironic because, you know, when you play red and blue and yellow, it's actually one of the hardest ones because you don't really have too many Pokemon that can combat rock types. But now that we're done with him, let's move on. We have the final rival fight of the game. Well, technically final mandatory rival fight of the game. He starts off with a stadium. We knock him out one hit with Surf. Then he brings out Magneton. We knock him out one hit. We have Meganium. Aurora Beam takes it down in one hit. We're just really too overleveled at this point. Go back, use Aurora Beam again, take him out. Then we have Gengar. We decide to go for Bite, that takes him down in one hit. Last but not least is Alakazam, we take it down in one hit, and we're done. We're done with all the mandatory rival fights in the game, but, you know, let's just say we're glad that Silver has grown quite a bit, or should I say Tack. Next up is Misty, this should be another easy one. Starts off with Golduck, we use Bite, uh, they use Psychic, but it doesn't do much. Uh, next we have Quagsire, which is part ground type, so I'm going to go for Surf, knock it down in one hit. We have Lapras, which is really good, but let's see what we can do. Uh-oh, this is a problem. It used Perish Song. Oh, this is going to be trouble. So we got to hurry up and knock it down. Otherwise, we're going to be in trouble. And... <laughs> Dang, I was not expecting to lose that fight, y'all. We're going to have to try this again. All right, so second try with Misty. Let's try this again. You know what that last fight taught me? Don't go in overconfident because they always have a plan for you, even when you think you can win. That was an embarrassing way to lose. Sends out Lapras. I go for Surf this time in case he uses Perish Song. It misses with Blizzard, I swear. And then we get hit by another Perish Song. So we only have two turns. We gotta hurry up and knock Star Me out, or otherwise we're going to lose. And we knock it out just in time and we win. That's crazy. I can't believe we lost the way we did. Well, on to the next gym. Next up, we have Lieutenant Surge, which I'm going to be honest, if we were a couple of levels lower, I would be a little concerned, but I think we're high enough to where we can start sweeping people. Um, Magneton and Raichu go down in one hit. Electabuzz goes down in one hit. We have Electrode. It goes down in one hit. We level up in the process. Another Electrode, and we use Surf to go ahead and take it down. So that was a pretty easy one. Let's move on to the next gym. Next up is Erica, and with Aurora being, we take Tangle out. Next up, we have Jump Luff, which is four times weakness because it's flying in grass, so we take it out easily. Then we have Victory Bell, another Aurora being takes it out. And then last but not least, we have Blossom, which we take it out with Aurora Beam as well. So another easy gym victory. I'm just going to tell you right now, we're not going to have any difficult gym battles here except for Blue. He'll be the hardest one. But everybody else, we should be able to easily sweep. So we have Koga's Prodigy, Janine, who is the fifth gym leader of the Kanto region. We start off with Aurora Beam, go ahead and take Crobat down. Next is Area Dose. We go ahead and use Surf, take it down. Weezing is next. Surf takes it down. Uh, next, we have another Weezing, which we also take down pretty easily. And last but not least, we have a Venomoth, which it used a dire hit. I don't know why it wasted this turn, but we get the win. 
Um, you know, glad that Koga has somebody that can take over the future gym lead. Uh, but the problem that I have is you would think she would be almost as strong as Koga was in the first generation, but hey, it is what it is. So next we have Sabrina. She sends out SP on first. We start off with a bite, goes down to one hit. Next we have Mr. Mean, Mr. Mime. <laughs> he goes down to one hit. Last but not least, we have Alakazam, and he goes down one hit. Um, and yeah, not much to say about that. Let's move on. Next up is Blaine, and may I say, Blaine gets no love in Gen 1. Blaine's AI in Gen 1 sucks. It's much better in Gen 2, but it really doesn't make a difference at this point because we have a water type, and we can just go ahead and literally swoop through his whole team with Surf, which is what we do. And with that being said, now we actually have a challenge coming up with the final gym leader, Blue. Alright, we have the second hardest challenge in the game. Shout out to Blue, but let's see if we can take him down. He starts off with Pidgeot, we use Aurora Beam, it goes down in one hit. Next is a Zegitor, we use Aurora Beam, it almost goes, I said almost, almost goes down in one hit. It uses Sunny Day, so that's a problem because Solar Beam could take us out, but luckily we're faster. Then we have Alakazam, we use Bite to go ahead and take it down. We get a special drop in the process, which could be a problem. Hopefully not, the sunlight fades, so that's good news. We use Aurora Beam on Water Onyx, it misses its Hyper Beam, thank goodness. It uses Twister, we hit it with another Bite, and then it uses a Full Restore. So we decided to just go for Bites in hopes that it'll flinch. Hyper Beam takes a lot of damage. Next is Rhydon, we decide to go for Surf to go ahead and take it out. And last but not least, we have Arcanine. It uses extreme speed and it takes us out. Let's try this again. I forgot to save it here last time, so I had to go all the way back to Sabrina. <laughs> that was annoying. But anyways, we're gonna try a different strategy. So instead, this time, I decided to start with Acid Armor just to build up my defense because I know um, that Water Onyx is gonna cause me some trouble. So we take out Pidgeot in one hit once again. Next up is a Zegator. We almost take it out in one hit. And it's the same scenario as last time. He uses a full restore. I mean, not full restore. Well, yeah, he did use a full restore, but he used a sunny day in the process. We keep using the Roar Beam, but eventually we're able to finally take him out. We level up in the process. Then we have Alakazam. Let's hope we don't get a special drop this time. And we don't, so that's good news. Next, we have Gyarados. And when our Acid Armor's up, we should be able to do pretty good if he uses Hyper Beam. But he sticks to Hydro Pump, gets a critical hit, but we take him out. Next, we have Arcanine, which gets party with Extreme Speed, but it doesn't use it this time. And then last but not least, we have Rhydon, and we take it out and get the win. All right. I told you guys that was going to be the hardest one. But with that out the way, now we can move on to Red, which is going to be the biggest challenge. I'm curious to see if we can beat Red lower than being at level 75. Let's find out. All right, final battle. We are battling Red. We have to be careful with Pikachu, though. If he uses Thunder, it could one-shot us. But we knock it out with Surf. Venusaur is up next. We are Roar Beam. It uses Sunny Day which means it's gonna go for Solar Beam and it takes a lot of damage from that. Was kinda of expecting that by the way. Next we have Espeon. Uh, we decide to go for Bite, but Psychic just takes us out. Let's try this again. Attempt number two. Once again, Pikachu starts out, except this time it gets Thunder off on us really, really quick. Venusaur comes out, we go for Aurora Beam. It goes for Solar Beam instead of Sunny Day and it takes us out. Um, needless to say, it's probably safe to say that we're going to need a few more levels before we try this again. So, attempt number three at level 70, and what I decided to do is give Vaporeon Never Melt Ice, so that way it, it boosts its ice type move for Aurora Beam, and maybe we could take Venusaur out in about two solid hits. Uh, except this time, once again, it doesn't even take it out the... Uh, half its health and we take out a lot of damage from solar beam next we have Espeon, and i'm not entirely sure if we're going to survive psychic we do survive with a slither of health but it doesn't make a difference so this is attempt number four and what i decided to do was i replaced aurora beam wait why didn't i heal oh my lord you know what screw it let's just see if we can get through this battle i go ahead and use surf on pikachu that knocks down one hit Venusaur is up next. We miss Blizzard and we get it on the second try and it knocks it out on one hit. But now we got Sunny Day set up, which 
I don't think we'll really make too much of a difference. Psychic hits us for less damage than it did last time, but at least we're not getting a special drop. We have Snorlax. This is going to be a problem. I decided to use Acid Armor in hopes that it'll really boost our defense, but Snorlax is just way too powerful. And I'm going to have to go heal up before I try this battle again. Attempt number six. We go ahead and use Surf on Pikachu. We take Pikachu out with one hit. Venusaur is next. It uses Sunny Day, but we're able to get a Blizzard off to take it down in one hit. Then we have Espeon, but the Sunlight is strong, so Surf is not going to do as much damage, but we still go for it anyways. Uh, it uses Psychic, and instead of it being a two hit KO like last time, it's a three hit KO. Well, not actually a zero hit KO because we lose. God darn. Right, so at level 75, what I decided to do is I took away the Never Melt Ice and I gave it leftovers. If I can't beat Red at level 75, I'll just go ahead and keep grinding. But I want to see if there's any way possible that I can do it. And as I stated before, held items are allowed in battle. So I go for Surf, we outspeed Pikachu. That's a one hit KO. Venusaur is next. Uh, we recovered because apparently we were hurt and I didn't even realize it. He uses Sunny Day, which is going to be a problem for later on. Not only that, but um, Blizzard doesn't want to hit KO, so we're already in some trouble. Alright, so next up, he uses Espeon. The bite does pretty good damage. He uses Psychic, but we're still recovering with Leftovers, so that's good. But now we have Snorlax, and let's see if Leftovers helps us out so we can survive. We missed Toxic, but we're still recovering, and then we miss it again. Oh my goodness, this is really causing us problems, and I don't think we're going to last. We'll see how this works out, and of course, we don't. We try again at level 77. Pikachu goes down in one hit. Venusaur is up next. We go for Blizzard and we miss. That just seems to be a common theme here that we just keep missing with Blizzard. But we ended up one hit KO on it. So, hey, I'm perfectly fine with that. Espeon goes to Reflect. Best case scenario. And we don't get the special drop. So that's good. Now we have Snorlax. We decide to go ahead and go for Toxic. It lands great. It uses Amnesia. Not good. But, hey, it could be a lot worse, right? We decide to go for Surf. It goes for Body Slam and paralyzes us as expected. It goes for Body Slam again, this time for massive damage because of the critical hit and we get knocked out. Right, so Pikachu is up first, level 77. We use Surf and knock it out in one hit. Next, we have Venusaur. I decide to go for Bite instead of going for Blizzard first because Blizzard's just been missing the first time around and I don't want to waste it. Luckily enough, we do enough. Uh, we go ahead and use Surf. Uh, even though the sunlight is strong, I think using a different strategy may work. We end up with a little bit more health than before, so that's good. I decided to go for Surf on Snorlax because he's going to use Amnesia, so hey, why not get the most of it? After that, we go to Toxic. Uh, he uses Body Slam, but we're not paralyzed yet, so that's good. We go for another Surf. He goes for another Body Slam, and we're still good to go, hopefully. We'll see. And one more Surf. Yes! We finally get past Snorlax. Oh my goodness. I don't think y'all understand how excited I am about that. Um, next up, we use Toxic, but we miss. Uh, leftovers is still helping us though, so we'll see how that goes. Um, if we can make it, that is. I'm a little nervous at this point, but we're gonna keep trying, y'all. He keeps hitting us with Surf, but as long as we don't get a critical hit, I think we should be good. We continue to use Bite, he continues to use Surf, and we level up the 78. Last but not least is Charizard, and we use one Surf and take him out. And by doing that, we win the game at level 78. Oh my goodness. Y'all, that red fight was on some other stuff. I knew it was going to be tough, but I didn't think it was going to be that tough. Jeez Louise. <sighs> well, that challenge is done. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Um, and hit it again so you can get caught up with all my notifications. I'm not sure which challenge I'm going to do next, but I'm definitely sticking to Gen 2. And I thank you guys for rocking with me. Uh, shout out to all y'all. Much appreciated. And until next time, much love. Stay safe and God bless. Peace.